Okay. So, so yeah, um, we'll start with Jupyter because it is something we'll be using throughout the course. Yeah. And um, why do we choose Jupyter for the course? It's it has a a um, I guess an intuitive user interface for most people when they're starting up. So if you're not that familiar with Python and with programming in general, um, it it will feel or it will be more quickly obvious what's happening than if you are writing these um, text files that contain some program code. Yeah. So that's probably the main reason. But it's also something that researchers use quite a lot to uh, share their research, share their computational things with each other. So, um, and there's several reasons for that. But what Jupyter is really good for is actually sharing a story um, with some computational content in them, uh, inside the story. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a kind of a narrative. So it contains, it can contain text that's formatted like this website here. Um, and then it can contain some um, some code, some Python code, or essentially almost any other language in there that, um, and it displays the results. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's a great way of sharing, yeah. um, sh sharing your results with others. Yeah, so I guess it, <coughs> sorry. I guess it gets around this problem of taking and like sending results to your supervisor and they see the plots, but they have no idea how they came. And then you're sort of going back and forth and um, sending code yes. and you have no idea what code goes to what figures and so on. Should we... um, oh. and the other reason researchers use it a lot is that it's really easy to quickly change something to fiddle around with things and um, then execute the code uh, and see what the change is, uh, what happens when you change this little thing here. Um, so it, it's easy for, uh, it, it's a good interface for quickly developing some research uh, program, right? Yeah. yeah. Should we do a demo? Should we start with the stuff? I believe that is Yeah, me, do you want correct? to do that? Yeah, okay, I will switch to my screen again. Here we go. And yeah, so on my computer, I'm activating Anaconda manually. So in the installation, you should have found the way to start Jupyter on your own computer. I'll demonstrate my way here. And that. I'm also going to make a directory. And then go to this directory. And then I should be able to run, let's see. It says Jupyter Lab, right? Now your prompt is already quite long. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit shorter. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna do no browser because I want it to start in this particular window here. And otherwise it's going to be starting in who knows which web browser I have open. I have so many. Mm, wait, this is actually not where I wanted it to start. Uh, I need to start another web browser here. Um, my demo web browser. So if you run it without no browser, it will automatically pop up in a web browser window that you have or start a new one, and which is usually what you want to happen. But, yeah, um, not in my so, case because, yeah. okay, here we go. So what do we see here in Jupyter Lab? What are the main points? Okay, so what you are looking at now um, is, well, it's a website, but um, inside that website you have um, kind of two panels and on the right right side um, is a launcher. So that's what you would want most of the time. Um, that has a Python tree option. Um, so you can start a Python tree notebook from there. Mm -hmm. um, so that would just create a new empty notebook. Um, in 
interestingly, um, there's, there's a file browser, which looks probably familiar to most people mm -hmm. on the left. Interestingly, it didn't start in the folder that you just created. Yeah, right? so it actually changed to it a different somewhere. directory of mine. I'm going to restart. Uh, so let's see. Here we go. So if you want to know what happened, it changed to a git directory automatically. OK, here we go. I didn't know that it would do that. But yeah, OK, so, okay. so here we go. So now it's, now it's in an empty folder. Yeah. OK, so um, I mean, that that's useful only if you have files there. Um, so right now you don't. So it's probably you might as well hide the um, yeah. yeah, hide it from there. This way. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, what else? Well, then you have some options in the launcher. You can create a Python tree notebook, but you can also open a terminal, yeah. which um, we might need at some point. Yeah. Um, at least tomorrow, I think, we start needing it. And you can also, so, yeah. well, you can create a markdown file, which is also useful. Yeah. Um, but we'll come back to that. Um, so you are using markdown in HackMD at the moment. Yeah. But we'll demonstrate that as well. But yeah, probably right now we want to create a new Python tree notebook. Yeah. Okay. There we go, and it worked. Yeah. So I can type now, Python here, right? Yeah. You can type Python code. We do our standard greeting, yes. and Hello it world. works. Okay. Okay. Um, how did you just run the code? So I pushed first. I pushed Control Enter and it stays on the same cell. Then I push Shift Enter, and it makes a new cell down below, or moves okay. down. You can also click this um, play button up here. And there's a plus button for creating a new cell as well. Oh, yes. So here so in the lecture materials, there's a bunch of shortcuts. Um, and uh, yeah, I always have to check somewhere, but it's, it is useful to use the keyboard, or, or it's much faster to use the keyboard. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. Can we create a markdown cell just yeah, okay. to show? Mm, so so here, we have a new cell. We switch between cell types. And yeah. this is markdown. And markdown is one option. Oh, it Why didn't did it change. Not select? Hmm. So now I changed the first one. There's something weird with my web browser here. Well, OK. This OK, you can use markdown. the keyboard shortcuts, though. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can um, type formatted text in. Um, well, if you are interested in the details of how to write Markdown, um, there is a reference um, again in the lecture materials. Mm -hmm. It's right above um, running code in Ju in Jupyter section. Yeah, there's a uh, link in the second paragraph. Yeah. And when I click play, we see it gets yeah. rendered. Yeah. So when you execute, when you run a markdown cell, it gets written as um, it, it gets formatted, and yeah, looks like a nice uh, text, nice formatted text. Now, if you want to edit it again, um, you will need to double click on this markdown cell, and then you can change it. Yes. Okay. I see. Okay. What else is important here? Well, um, you saw when you ran the Hello World cell, it printed something. Um, yes. And the output comes uh, just below the cell. Okay. So I can do like five, and it comes yeah. below. Yeah, OK. OK. So um, should we do some examples um, for loop? Sure. Some. Okay. Yeah. Let's see for what should we do in here? Print. Um, print i. Okay. Print i squared. Print squares. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now, um, when you call print, it goes. Um, if when you call print inside the loop, it, it does actually print it. If you didn't call print, and then it wouldn't print it because it only prints the last line. Um, this is something special to, um, yeah, special to Jupiter. It prints the last line. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, let's try that actually. Let's do some range five, uh, for example. Oh yeah, okay. And so this will sum up numbers between one and five, and it prints it. And it prints it. Yeah. Um, you can also put print in front, um, or put that inside a print inside the print function, and that will work. Okay, let's try that. All right. Um, you're missing a parenthesis no. between print and sum, so it's complaining that print sum doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, um, there's something called magics that we should also introduce mm -hmm. before moving into the exercises. So, um, uh, magics are just essentially commands you can give Jupyter. They, they are not Python commands, but they are uh, other types of code. So, they always start with a percentage sign. And in this case, you uh, start with a double percent sign. So, that means that the entire cell is now magic uh, code. It's not Python code. Um, bash is um, the usual, or the most common Linux terminal. So that's just what the word there means. And uh, yeah, you can write some bash code here. Yeah. And I guess we should emphasize this will, might only work on Mac and Linux. Does it work on Windows now? Mm. I expect not, but if you are running from maybe Git for Windows, yeah. it might work. Yeah, there is probably oh. a um, yeah. something that runs on in the Windows command line. Yeah, let's say it's very possible this doesn't work on you because this is actually not running in Python. It's calling some other program, and if that other program is not available, then well, what can you do? It just won't work. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. So should we go to the exercises? Yeah. Um, so. Should we take so, maybe, um, how long do we have for exercises? Mm. I mean, we have 20 minutes or half an hour before the break, say yeah. 20 minutes. So are we doing exercises one here? Exercise, and oh yeah, one and two. two. We did everything before exercise two. And then we come back for a little bit of commentary. Yeah. Yeah. So breaks in 20 minutes. Should we say like 15 ish minutes? 15 minutes makes sense. Okay. So and um, just quick, a uh, quick note about the order. So the, in exercise one, there's two optional things and it makes sense to do exercise two before going back for the optional things. Mm -hmm. They are yeah. slightly more complicated. Yeah. And this will be, these exercises will be really simple. So basically it's just a little bit of time to make sure everyone's on the same page before we go to more uh, complex things. So if you're new with Jupyter, play around, try the keyboard shortcuts, do everything you can think of. And um, if you're not new to Jupyter, then try to find something new. Yeah, so. And we'll see in 15 minutes. Yeah, and in the stream, there is at the bottom here link to the exercises and it will say what to do and when we're back and all that. You can keep asking questions. Hello, please. It's time to come back. Hello, hello. Hey. So, um, let's see any interesting questions in the HackMD? Let's take a look. There was one interesting one up here. Is there any advantage of Jupyter over regular code? And that's actually what we will discuss next. Um, there was this collab offer the same as Jupyter. And yeah, I mean, it's I think it's roughly a very similar interface. So I'm not sure if they re-implemented it, but it uses the same notebook format and also um, a lot of the same software kind of things. Yeah. It's slightly it has, different because um, it's focused on the cloud. Um, and it does have some additional tools that Jupyter doesn't have. And there are 
a lot of the the plugins that you can. So Jupiter is very a uh, Jupiter Lab is very extensible. Um, you can extend it a lot, uh, whereas Colab doesn't have quite the same um, yeah. same amount of uh, extensions. Mm -hmm. Let's see. But, yeah, it's basically the same idea. Yeah, we see interesting comments about the Bash magic working on some Windows 10. Yeah, and some uh, doesn't work on some. Uh, do I sound any better now? Some people were complaining about my volume. Hopefully, it's louder now. Yeah, because the important thing is that we are relatively close to each other in volume. Yeah. Okay, hopefully I'm uh, a bit louder now. Um, should we go to the lesson and talk about why Jupiter and why not Jupiter? And then we'll come back to... Yeah, let's do that. See if there's more questions. So I, I think we'll an be answering a number of good questions in the HackMD. Yeah. So... Well, where is it? So why Jupiter? What are its advantages and disadvantages? Yeah, so I already mentioned um, a couple of things. So it is, I mean, compared to writing a um, writing Python in a text file, um, you can you can create this story with um, formatted text and with the outputs of your computation directly visible. Uh, so for each step. So um, and these can be plots, for example, this can be images. So you can tell the story um, in a clearer way than with just text. That is one major advantage. Uh, now, Jupyter is, um, for all of you, almost certainly Jupyter Lab is running in a web browser. Um, it is designed to run um, in a server in the background and uh, be accessed through the web browser, which makes it really easy to share online. So there's several ways of sharing your work online when you have written a, a Jupyter notebook. Um, yeah, what else? Well, and, and others can then run your notebook. So um, it's not just that they can see your result, they can actually run the code and verify that it produces the same or similar output. Um, what else? Um, I mean, it's the whole. You can put the whole story in one place um, from the beginning to the end. Um, it's a kind of a linear way of uh, of um, including um, all the elements. Like it, it's like a paper with equations, but instead of equations, you can also have code. Mm -hmm. um, anything yeah. else? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like it's so it's great for this getting started kind of stuff. And why is and it it's, not yeah, good? It's very easy to share. Easy to share. So if you put it on GitHub, there's a section on Binder on the last day. Um, Binder is a quick and easy way of putting, of sharing your notebook online without really having to set up the server yourself or going to go through um, all that much um, work to share it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, why not Jupiter? Um, there's. Uh, people will run, during this course, people will run into problems where they execute the cells out of order. They go and change something, execute something, and um, the state is somehow different from what you expect. And then the solution is to run it from the beginning to the end. Um, it's not linear. And, and that makes it, it, that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. It makes it confusing. Um, they don't promote modularity. So what does that mean? It's um, hard to take a piece of code, a function, for example, from a notebook and um, use it in a different project. Whereas if you write it as a um, code file, it's much easier. Um, this testing is not straightforward. Version control is not straightforward. Um, those are important things when doing serious software development. Um, there are ways of doing it, but there's limitations in uh, both of those. Yeah. Um, hmm. What else? It's almost time for our break. Actually, it is time for our break now. Yeah. Should we wrap up? There's plenty more people can read about um, things here. Um, and you can discuss a little bit more. And 
let's see, were there any more HackMD questions we should comment on? Um, yeah, well, I think most of these questions are being answered there well enough. So let's go on. You can keep reading and we'll see. So, yeah. Um, okay, break time. HackMD will have the break announcement and we'll be back at the top of the hour. So see you, see you, see you later. Bye.